Well, today's first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 3. Now, many of you probably have seen the old movie called The Bible. It's basically about the story of Genesis, Noah's Ark, and then the story of Abraham. And there have been other books and movies of that time period. And they always show Satan as appearing as the snake tempting Eve. Well, none of them ever read the scriptures correctly because Satan does not appear as a snake when it appears to Eve. Satan doesn't become a snake until after what you heard today. Satan has tempted Eve, Eden is given to temptation, then Adam is given into temptation. Now they realize they've sinned, God appears, and then now God's going to tell to the serpent that you will be crawl on the ground and you will eat dirt. So Satan is, um, is, a, is, a, is, a, is depicted in the book of Genesis as a dragon. And the dragon is another uh, word used to describe many very, very large lizard or crocodile in the, in the time of uh, when Genesis was put together. So what happens if you have a crocodile and you take away the legs? Or what do you get? You get a big, ugly snake with a big mouth is what you get. And that's what happens here as depicted. But how, how Satan is depicted really is very, is rather unimportant to the fact that Satan exists because both today's first reading and gospel reading have a lot to do with Satan. So let's get a couple of things perfectly clear. Satan is real. The devil is real. The devil promotes the values of the world, which is get as much as you can here and now. There's nothing beyond it. And whatever happens to you, it's never your fault. It's always somebody else's fault. Those are the values of the world. And Satan promotes those values. And that is what we are opposed to. And not only that, Satan does not want you to have a relationship with Jesus. And he'll tempt you any way possible to keep you from having that relationship. Now, here's the good news. You're all children of God. The love of Jesus Christ is in all of your lives because of baptism and the receiving of the Eucharist. Christ is there. So when you are tempted... They can, these temptations come in all kinds of forms. Two of the most common forms is getting angry and watching things on the computer. You have no business watching on the computer or anywhere else for that matter. And when those temptations come, it's important to recognize that you're just not giving in to a feeling or giving in to your temper. You are being actively encouraged to sin by the devil. This is the very actions going on. And you have to counter that action with action on your part. You have to say when temptation comes, you say to the demon of anger, I'm not going to give in, go to hell. Or, I'm, or, 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 it's, or if it's the demon of pornography, or if it's the demon of anything else, you have to be able to say, no, I'm not going to give in. And you tell the demon to go to hell. It's perfectly okay to tell the demon to go to hell. Now, that's not sinning, that's not swearing. It actually, it's a, it's a, you'll find when you do it, you'll feel something, it'll be very positive in your life because you are actively fighting a real demon who's trying to tempt you because that's what's really going on. So from a spiritual standpoint, and I think an eternal standpoint, I give you that advice because Jesus will empower you to resist. He loves you as much as he loves his own mother. A beautiful thing that he says today in today's gospel reading. That's a marvelous and beautiful thing of how much he loves every single one of us. God's love is within you. He gives you the strength and power to resist temptation.